Assalamualaikum. So in this week's lecture, we will carry on with our two-dimensional scalar variable problem from last week, but complete the finite element formulation for it. So you may recall that last week we had um, ended at deriving the weak form for the heat conductance problem and also to consider how a two-dimensional domain can be discretized using triangular, do uh, tri triangular elements. So what we now need to do is to actually uh, set up the finite element equation that is to get our familiar Ka is equals to B expression first and then start to see how that will be used for um, the discretized domain. Okay. So in order to get to this, uh, the uh, system equation, you may recall that we take our weak form and then use the Galerkin approximation, right? We use the Galerkin approximation, that is, we use the same shape functions to interpolate the field variable and the trial variable or the weight variable. So that is, we use, uh, as we've already introduced, our shape, shape functions n. We use n to interpolate both w and t. And we uh, represent these approximated uh, variables as wh and th. So these are approximations of w and t respectively. OK. Next, we also know that uh, using our shape functions and our degrees of freedom, we can write the interpolation expression in matrix form like so. So WH is interpolating using its degrees of freedom, represented by A star, which, which can be arbitrary because our weight function is arbitrary. And TH is interpolated using the nodal uh, temperatures. So A contains the nodal temperatures. Right. So once we've got these Galerkin approximations, we substitute them into our weak form. Okay, so let's do that. So wherever we have W, we get WH. Wherever we have T, we get TH. Straightforward. Next, we also know the interpolation exp expressions. So wherever we have WH, I can substitute NA star. And wherever I have TH, I can substitute NA. So that's what I've done in this second expression right here. So note very carefully, WH turns into NA star and TH turns into NA. Similarly, on the right hand side, where I only have WH, so uh, the um, uh, substitution is just of NA star for both the terms. Right. Now, you may recall that if you have the transpose of a product, you can expand this transpose out such that the order of the product is reversed. So that if I have del n a star transposed, that actually becomes, if I expand it out, a star transposed times the second product, the second term in the product, del n transposed. Okay? A normal transpose key expansion hoti hai products ke liye. Then also I recall that I already know that my del n the gradient of the the uh, shape functions is actually my b vector uh, sorry my b matrix my b matrix which contains the derivatives of the shape functions and finally noting that a star and a that i have a star and a uh, contain the degrees of freedom which can which are basically they are constant terms so a node ki jo degree of freedom, that's just a constant. It's not a variable in, in space, basically. So using all of this information, so that is substituting in the expression for b, b is del n, and then using the transpose product rule to expand it out. And finally, noting that I can take my constants out of the integral, I can rewrite this expression right here like so. And all that I've done is, I've expanded this term out and when I do that I get a star t first and then this a star t of course is a constant so I can bring that outside the integral. Baki andar kya gaya? Del n. Del n ki jaga I write down just b. So phir wo b ka transpose rai gaya. And then I have d coming in as it is and then this del n, second del n is the, then becomes a b, b matrix. All of this integrated over the entire domain and then taking a constant out on the right hand side. 
Now, this is slightly different from the 1D case because we are writing everything in matrix notation, whereas last time we hadn't done that. We had we'd done it uh, using index notation. So uh, the important thing to remember about matrix notation is that the order of the multiplication is of utmost importance. Important is of utmost importance. So if I if I have my a star t outside on the left hand side, it is because wo pehle multiply ho raha tha, whereas a this constant vector is being post multiplied, which is why it's outside the integral on the right hand side. Okay, so uh, please be very careful about the order of multiplication right here. Okay. Right. So now let's move on to see how we can, so we've got our left hand side manipulated in a particular way. Let's see how we can manipulate our right hand side. Okay, so for the right hand side, the thing that I want you to note is that this right hand side essentially contains this product n a star. Ab is n a star ke andar, I remember that n was a row vector. That is, it was something, something, something. And A star is a column vector. So when I multiplied out N and A star, that is a row vector multiplied by a column vector, I actually get a one by one matrix just to just to a sanity check yay so n k rank is one by let's say something i doesn't i don't i don't quite know maybe it's just the number of nodes so one by n and a star is actually n by one so in ka jab product mein loom, one by n multiplied by n by one i end up getting a one by one product okay so one more way of writing down this n a star product agar mere paas sir one by one product hi aa hai, is that then n a star is actually just equal to n a star ka transpose kyunki one by one matrix ka transpose wohi nikalta hai theek hai so the point is ke n a star is actually equal to n a star transpose and then this transpose I can expand out using my um, uh, rule of transpose of a product such that n a star transpose becomes a star transpose n transpose okay and this then allows me to manipulate my right hand side by again noting ke a star t jo hai, that's a constant so I can take it out and this time around that just goes out on the uh, it becomes pre multiplied so that moves to the left hand side and then uh, it it's being multiplied by the two integrals calculated separately okay so now something neat comes along so we have a star t on the left hand side for both equations um, on the left on uh, both sides of the equation on the left hand side I also have this integral multiplied by a whereas on the right hand side I just have this now this is increasingly looking familiar to everything that we've done for finite element so far if you notice then that basically this is our very familiar stiffness matrix k okay. this is the global uh, stiffness matrix jo hum usko pehle kehte hote the. But this time around, we actually give it a different name because we are looking at a heat conductance problem. That is why we refer to it as the conductance matrix. But it is completely analogous to the stiffness matrix that we've been considering for elasticity problems. Right? So this is our global conductance matrix. Whereas from the right hand side, I can see that everything inside the bracket, this basically corresponds to my right hand side vector. Now for the heat conductance problem, the right hand side vector is actually heat fluxes, which is why I will represent my right hand side vector by F for this case. Okay. So because it stands for flux and this flux is given by all the terms in the bracket on the right hand side, which essentially consists of 
वन डोमेन टर्म ठीक है जी जो सोर्स था हीट सोर्स था दैट इज एसेंशियली कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू द डोमेन टर्म ऑफ कोर्स दैट मेक सेंस कि वो जो पूरी बॉडी के अंदर हीट सोर्स लाए कर रहा है उससे ही डोमेन फ्लक्स अराइज करेगा एंड देन इट ऑल्सो कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ सेकेंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन फ्राम द फ्लक्सेज अक्रॉस द बाउंड्री ऑफ द डोमेन ओके सो दिस क्यू बार एंड गैमा क्यू दिस वॉज द फ्लक्स ऑन द अप्लाइड ऑन दिस वॉज द फ्लक्स ऑन द ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ द बाउंड्री वेर वी हैड अप्लाइड फ्लक्स एसेंशली राइट सो वेर वी न्यू द फ्लक्स बाउंड्री कंडीशन दैट्स वट एम ट्राइन से दैट इज ऑन द नेचुरल बाउंड्री कंडीशन now the reason why it has a negative contribution is because you recall that we had defined fluxes as um, uh, going out so the normal is defined as going out of the domain which is why these fluxes are considered positive when they are leaving the domain hence why there is a minus contribution that they have for the flux vector overall okay so just to repeat then that i'm saying that we have one body flux and one boundary flux and i am representing them separately as f omega to represent the uh, domain or body flux and f gamma to represent the boundary flux okay recall again from our 1d examples ke we have not yet included point fluxes which may also be possible let's say ke hamare paas kisi problem mein um kisi ek uh, just at one point of the body we are introducing some sort of heat somehow um ya phir koi koi nuclear reaction ho raha at just one particular point and it's producing some heat and so on and so forth so point considerations which cannot be integrated quite like this hence why they are not accounted for within these integrals they must be introduced separately just by adding them up wherever at whichever node they exist so as before point fluxes are introduced separately for our global right hand side vector okay so once we've got all these definitions in place my expression right here ye wali this can be written out as a star t waisa ka waisa hi reh gaya this has turned into k and then on the right i had uh, another a not another sorry and a being multiplied by k so a star t k a and then the right hand side becomes a star t multiplied by f just the right hand side vector i can take out a star t um, as common right and bring my bring this term to the left hand side as well so that i can manipulate this expression and write it like so okay the reason why i am doing this is because you may recall Okay, now if I want to get this expression is equals to zero, there are two ways of doing it. So either my this term is zero, a star t is equal to zero, or k a minus f is zero. Right? Now because my weight function was arbitrary, that means that a star t के ऊपर ऐसी कोई compulsion नहीं है कि it must be zero. it could actually take any values so long as it's fulfilling the boundary conditions which is why the only way for this expression to be true is if the term in the bracket that is k a minus f is equals to 0 okay so rearranging that only this term in the bracket can be equal to 0 to fulfill this expression so i get my standard finite element equation that k a is equals to f okay now this time we've actually used a slightly different approach to uh, formulate the galerkin fe formulation um just for a taster ke there there are these different ways ek up index notation mein hum pehle kar rahe the whereas this time around humne pure ko matrix notation mein hi continue kiya hai okay pehla difference this is what we've done from our 1d case and the second difference is that for our um arbitrary weight function w we've we've used a slightly different way of noting ke yes because a star has to be arbitrary which is why only this expression has to be zero in order to fulfill the equation that is why we get ke a is equals to f um in principle the argument is exactly the same as what we had done for the 1d case theek hai jisme humne usme humne exact values li thi uh, for a star 
تاکہ ہم ایک سیٹ آف الجبرک اکویشن سیٹ اپ کر سکیں دس از بیسکلی دا سیم تھنگ اوکے بٹ ان میٹرکس نوٹیشن سو ناؤ دیٹ وی ہیو آر اکویژن کے اے از ایکوز ٹو ایف دیٹ از وی نو کہ ہماری یہ کنڈکٹنس میٹرکس ہے وچ ٹیکس دس فارم اینڈ وی ہیو رائٹ ہینڈ سائڈ ویکٹر ایف وچ ٹیکس دس فارم وی کال دیٹ وی کین پوز آل آف دیز رادر دین گلوبلی وی کین پوز دم ایلیمنٹ وائز دیٹ از وی کین فائنڈ آر element stiffness matrix sorry this should be a small ke so the slides that i will send you will have a small ke and our right hand side vector then becomes f e representing the flux vector within the individual element for the individual elements okay um when we do this we just have to be careful that now our b matrix and our shape function matrix are all posed element wise basically okay so great recall ke we we do this element wise uh, calculation of the stiffness matrices and then we assemble them into the global uh, finite element problem and solve that okay so then phir hamara assembly wala uh, procedure uh, aata hai okay so that that's basically it um, once we've got the assembled problem we put in our boundary conditions and then we solve the matrix equation so all of that is better understood by using an example so we'll consider that in a second so i just want to make a side note again about we've discussed multiple times ke the the assembled final finite element matrix equation that we get that is independent of the units so that's just a numerical algebraic equation okay it does not Uh, take within itself equations so it's for the user to be very very careful about uh, considering consistent units in the finite element analysis okay so as i've mentioned to you before okay please use si units taake taake koi there are no doubts and there is no possibility of error if you just use si units throughout just as an example of how 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 terribly things can go wrong if uh, this this such a minute error of units is made for finite element analysis is that there 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 was a nasa ka there was a mars climate orbiter jo unhone pehle bheja tha uh, not the one that uh, has been sent in this century and this one mars climate orbiter it was called it essentially crashed okay and it was it led to a loss of about what is it 125 million dollars and the reason for it was ke unki finite element analysis ke andar units jo thi wo ek team ne koi aur use ki hui thi aur dusri team ne koi aur use ki hui thi okay and this this uh, cost so much at least no human life but uh, a large amount of monetary loss so please please use consistent units just use si units in your finite element analysis throughout okay great so let's start an example to um uh, uh, consolidate everything that we've learned so far so um for this case we've got a uh, a rectangular plate basically it's uh, drawn like show so this these are the this is the domain um and we know that the material has a conductivity which is isotropic okay that's good so isotropic ka matlab hai ke that it behaves in the same way in all directions and for an isotropic material please note ke the um heat conductivity uh, matrix jo material property hai that only has values in the diagonal terms basically that is this is wo jo humne pehle likhi hui thi k x x k y y etc thi wo that just turns into k whatever its thermal conductivity is in all directions and all these non diagonal terms are zero okay so this is this is a side note but important for our analysis so sometimes you may just be given that an isotropic material has a heat conductivity of 5 whatever the units are okay so then we must assemble this d like so okay um uh, next uh, so we know the weak form of the problem so we're not going to derive it that's what this is saying we'll follow just the final steps that is that we already know that the equation takes ka is equals to f key form 
to solve this problem basically. So to, to find a solution to the heat equation for this given domain geometry, heat source and the boundary conditions. Okay. Matlab ye ke hum idhar tak pahunch chuke hain. That means ke hume k bhi pata hai kya hai, f bhi pata hai kya hai. That isn't ki expressions ka hume pata hai. We will need to calculate it. But we don't need to start from our strong form, convert weak form, convert into Galerkin and then to get this equation. So we are already here. Now let's look at the exact problem that we're given. So as I said, we've got a rectangular domain. Um, x dimension, x length is going up to 2, y it's up to 1. We have a temperature boundary condition, so an essential boundary condition at x is equals to 0. And we know that the temperature here is prescribed to be 0. Okay, so this is my gamma t right here. And then all the other parts of the boundary, the, all the other the other three sides, they are all prescribed flux boundary conditions. So they are all part of gamma Q. And for me, gamma Q is given that Q is 0 for this top boundary and this bottom boundary. And Q is equals to 20 at this right boundary. Okay, fine. Next, I also have been given that my heat source is uniformly distributed and has a value of 3. Pura domain mein. Okay, so this is all the information that we're given. Notice that I just had discussed units, but for, uh, for ease, in this case, mein, we're just completely ignoring ke kya units hai for our heat conducting problem. Okay, so what, uh, just as a summary of what the steps we will follow. So what do we first need to do is of course that we have a rectangular domain. Hai. We need to discretize our domain. So that will be my first step. I'll discretize the domain. And then what I'll do is over my triangular elements, for each element, I'll find my conductance matrix and my flux vector. Okay, so element-wise, we find the problem ko find karna shuru karne. And then I'll assemble it into the global stiffness matrix and my global right hand side vector. And once I've got the assembled problem, then I can solve that global equation after inserting the boundary conditions into it. Great. Okay. So let's start. So let's consider that we discretize our domain using two three noded uh, linear triangular elements such that we take our elements uh, in this in this uh, basically configuration right so that is we take first element to be going from this node 1 to 2 here and then node 3 up here okay and then our second element going from these global nodes is 2 4 and 3 consisting of this one so separating them out i could also draw them out like so so this is element 1 and this is element 2 now I have also given these nodal positions uh, uh, some global names. So this is my global element, uh, global node 1, global node 2, global node 3, global node 4. Now notice that for the global node numbering there isn't quite a convention. So it's up to us, uh, whoever the user is, to define what our, um, uh, the node numbering that we're going to use. Um, whereas for the element-wise uh, node numbering, we do have the convention of following anti-clockwise named uh, nodes. So I'm taking 1, 2, 3 for element 1 and 1, 2, 3 here for element 2. Okay, great. So now that I've got these, then let me jump to finding my element-wise conductance and flux vectors basically. So Pele, let me jump to... Um, my conductance matrices. Okay, so let's let's start with element one first. Okay, so recall that we know our conductance matrix has this expression right here. Here, that K E is the integral over the entire domain of B transpose D B uh, over the entire domain. Okay. Now let's have a think. So, इसके लिए clearly we need to find the B matrix for each element. So, we are doing element 1 ko kar rahe khali, to element 1 ke liye zara B matrix. Ko Recall from the last lecture that we already have the expression for the B matrix. So, just writing that down, this was what we had. Okay, so clearly the B matrix, as we discussed last time, for a linear triangular element is a constant. And what are the constant ke andar kya values and individual terms? Ki? It's just in terms of 
the area of the element and the nodal positions of the element okay so knowing all of this nodal positions bhi hum uh, hame clearly uski geometry se known hai so we can substitute all those values in here to find what b matrix is okay so ye bhi hum is pe aate hain ek second let me first go back to again the k k the stiff the conductance matrix okay so agar conductance matrix ke andar hum keh rahe hain ke b multiplied b transpose multiplied by d multiplied by b ka integral lena hai over the domain so let's let's think about each of these terms to so b to we've already just seen is a constant to so b is a constant these two then are constants d for a given material in this case is also a constant theek hai wo hame d a ki given tha wo pichli slide pe we know what d is that's also just a constant so the point here is then that all the terms that are being multiplied for my k matrix in this case all of these are constants so i can take them outside the integral okay so if i take them outside the integral i just get that k is a that constant some constant terms multiplied together the integral of the domain a what is the integral of the domain for a 2d domain this basically is agar hum iske just talking about this this term right here okay nothing but just the integral over the domain domain kya hai hamare 2d ke andar domain is of course just integration over dx and dy for 2d थ्री डी के अंदर वॉल्यूम इंटेग्रल हो जाता है डी एक्स डी वाई डी जेड लेकिन फॉर टू डी आर डोमेन इज जस्ट डी एक्स बाई डी वाई दैट इज दिस इज एक्चुअली जस्ट एन इंटीग्रेशन ओवर द इंटायर एरिया ऑफ आर गिवन बॉडी सो ये सिर्फ जो दिस इंटीग्रेशन इज एक्चुअली जस्ट द इंटेग्रल ऑफ डी ए and the integral of da over the entire domain is just the area of that element that is my k matrix written out all of this discussion <clears throat> becomes a constant multiplied by the integration of the domain now that domain as i've just said means it's an integration over the area so that all of this just turns into area bhi aap ek scalar value ko bahar le aaye wo jo bhi constants multiply ho rahe the multiply by this scalar area and that's it so luckily for us for this linear triangular element ki jo hamare paas given problem hai isme hame koi integration as such perform nahi karni pad rahi we just have constants for all of um uh, constant terms which are being multiplied together to give us the uh, conductance matrix for the for element 1 okay ab now let me go back to finding ke ye constant variable constant terms hai kya so the area of element 1 ko agar hum dekhe so element 1 is going from so this this was the length of from 0 to 2 so this is actually from 0 to 2 whereas this one was going from 0 to 1 so ek length ho gayi 2 ek ho gayi 1 so the area of course is just equal to what a1 is half of the base times the height of the area so 1 multiplied by 2 that is area of element 1 is equals to 1 right and then once i know my area i can substitute it into the expression for b knowing all the nodal positions as well for example node 1 ke coordinates kya hai 0 0 so x1 bhi 0 hai and y1 bhi 0 hai node 2 ke coordinates hai 2 comma 0 and node 3 ke coordinates hai 0 comma 1 okay so noting all of these down i can find my b1 matrix and plugging now 
my B1 matrix, my D matrix, and my area into the expression for the conductance matrix, I find that my K is actually given by this expression right here. Okay. Yes. So 1 by 4 because ye half for both of the B matrices multiply ho gaya. and then ye transpose of B transpose hai ye wali term then D then B again and the product I will find using either my calculator or let's say MATLAB koi bhi, uh, computing software um, to get this expression right here for my K1 okay great so now we'll follow exactly the same procedure for conductance matrix of element 2 k2 uske liye bhi we, we can note that again the b matrix is constant d is constant b is constant again so k ke under that then involves just the 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 pro, these same expressions but for element 2 that is a2 b2 and so on okay so substituting those and finding them we get my k2 matrix to be equal to this okay please try this yourself okay you try yourself okay okay so um that means i've got my two individual element conductance matrices now i need to assemble them into my global conductance matrix uskeli i'm just going to move back uh, a little and look at my global problem so globally I have four nodes or her node pe eight degree of freedom hai. that means I have four degrees of freedom so that the rank of my K matrix should be four by four basically Take four degrees of freedom so four by four K ho gaya. Ab isko assemble karne ke liye I need to use my local to global degree of freedom map so I have element 1 and element 2 ke liye construct kar liye. So element 1 ke node 1, 2, 3 correspond to global 1, 2, 3, right? So I get this. Whereas element 2 ka 1, 2, 3 corresponds to global 2, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3. So that's what I've got. Now following the same old procedure for assembly, I can find my K matrix. But in uska ek aur asaan tarika. Wo to aapko pehle hi pata hai ki, for example, global one one ke andar element one ka one one aega, whereas global two ke andar two two ke andar let's say element one ki taraf se two two aega, whereas element two ki taraf se one one uh, term aegi. The other way of uh, figuring this out is just to look at the global problem and see that only nodes two and three contribute both to uh, element 1 and element 2 that is why only node 2 and 3 ki jo respective terms hongi they would have some contribution coming from the uh, local stiff uh, conductance matrix of element 1 and of element 2 so sirf unhi terms mein 2 3 ke andar kuch na kuch add ho raha so here we can see a 2 2 wali term mein kuch add ho raha hai 3 3 wali term mein bhi add ho raha hai or uh, two three key terms it turns out that they are they are zero basically okay so just just follow the straightforward assembly procedure so i get my global conductance matrix as well this way next comes our right hand side vector that is our flux vector so pele again we have to find our flux vectors for our individual elements okay so let's let's move to that so we have to find our flux vector. Okay. Now recall that our flux vector, we already divided kar diya tha into the different contributions. So one was the domain term, which was source ki wajah se aari thi, is source term ki wajah se, s is equals to 3 ki wajah se. And then the second one was the boundary flux. Okay, we'll come to that in a second. So pehle let's find the source flux vector. So source flux vector ki expression jo thi from our notes that we had uh, compiled in this lecture before, we know that the domain flux f omega is given by the integral of n times s integrated over the entire domain. Okay. Now in this case, our s, the source, is a constant over the entire domain. So it can be taken out of the integration. So that's why I've moved this right here. 
So basically, this then just consists of the integral over the entire domain of the shape functions. Okay, so shape functions. So maybe it would be a good idea that we should write down our shape functions for my for our triangular domain. Oh, sorry, for our triangular element. Okay, now comes a slightly uh, a quick and interesting little technique that we could use. So of course, noting ke, what is this, if we want to find, let me write this down using some the pen color. So if I'm trying to find the integral of, let's say, n1 over the domain, then as we just discussed, this is basically in 2D, that means the integration of n1 over dA or dA is given to us by again in 2D it is domain dx by dy so that then turns into a double integral can you figure out I two integral signs because it's integration over dx and over dy okay so yes so it's just this double integral given right here now the one way of finding this out is that we substitute this expression for n1 this one right here in here and finding it but there's actually another way and this is the 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 technique that we'll use basically this expression right here n1 dx by dy is actually let me draw out n1 over the domain for the um, for this uh, element let's say so if this is our element 1 hai, let's consider then n1 looks like this we have discussed it n1 jo hai, will take a value of 1 at node 1 and it will be 0 at both the other nodes okay so it looks it has the, it's it's uh, it, it, its profile is a surface that looks like something like this okay so ye jo ye integral hai, this is actually the area under the n1 sorry not the area I apologize the volume under the n1 surface that is it is this entire entire volume to iske under hai, surface ke niche okay this is very very similar to jab hum let's say in 1d kisi ek function ka let's say koi f of x ka dx ke saath integral nikal rahe hote hain ye f of x dx jo hai this is actually ki agar hum f of x ko plot kare against x koi surface koi line hame yu mil jayegi then this integral is actually the area under the curve right to usi ki analogy for a 2d domain jiske upar koi variable exist karta ho in 2d this integral n1 dx by dy is actually the volume of the um, uh, basically the volume under that uh, that variable basically Similar to the fact that the area under the curve was the volume under the curve. Under the curve hai. Okay, so this little trick we can use karke basically we can find kar sakte ke what would be n1 dx by dx that would be equal to this volume right here. Now what volume hai kya? This is a pyramid shape. So what is the pyramid ki volume? Kya hogi? A pyramid has a volume of 1 by 3 times the area of the base multiplied by the height. So in this case, mein then we need the area of the element and the height we know is just 1. Okay, so that then turns into 1 by 3 of the area of the element, basically. Okay, for each, each of n1, n2 and n3. Great. So uh, what is the area of element 1? We've already found it. It is actually equal to 1. So uh, this integral turns out to be 1 by 3 for each, uh, each of the shape functions. Next, please remember that there is still a source 
constant source term being multiplied by the integral. So S is case mein 3 hai. So 3 ko multiply karna hai by 1 by 3 such that each of our terms for our flux vector turns into just 1. Okay, 3 multiplied by 1 by 3. That's what I just, uh, I've done. So both for um, element 1 ke liye bhi humare paas yahi flux vector ban jata hai. 1, 1, 1. Uh, um, body flux vector, sorry, source flux vector. Whereas element 2 ka bhi area kyunke humare paas 1 hi hai um, exactly because of that and source b constant is equals to 3. So I get a source flux vector for element 2 also being equal to 1, 1, 1. Now these individual element wise source flux vectors we need to assemble into the global source vector. So if we do that, noting that only nodes 2 and 3 are the ones that take contributions from both elements. So usi ke upar wo dono add honge so that my global source vector becomes this right here. Okay. Okay, this is assembly ki hai maine. Similar, purana wohi procedure use karke. Okay, please go through this entire example yourself. Try to solve it yourself. Um, and then if you have any questions, we'll discuss them in our... Um, QA. Okay. So, up here we have source flux vector. We are still uh, uh, left with our boundary flux vector. So, let's move on to the boundary flux vector. Um, that has an expression given right here, like so. Now, under again, our applied flux Q bar is a constant. These constant values are known. Hai. Um, so we can take it outside the integral. So we only end up with the uh, line integral or the surface boundary integral of the shape functions. Okay. Secondly, note that our Q bar is 0 for this boundary and 0 for this boundary. Matlab ye ke uske liye, us boundary pe to hamara koi uh, uh, boundary flux hua hi nahi phir. It's just 0. So it's only non-zero right here. That is for this part of the boundary, only this part of the boundary, okay? Matlab ye ke only for our global nodes 2 and 4, ya phir, in other words, only for element 2 ke nodes 1 and 2, only for this side, jo 1 or 2 nodes ko join kar rahi hai, only here do I have a non-zero flux. So it's only this boundary that I need to find the integral for, okay? So iski tricky tricks hum ab manipulations karna shuru karte hain. So that is, hume sirf aur sirf is pure domain ke, is puri boundary ke bajaye, only I need to find it for edge 1, 2, for element 2. Matlab ye ki sirf f2 gamma, f2 gamma ki edge 1, 2 ke liye nikalna hai. ठीक है जी ओके तो अब उसके ऊपर आते हैं तो मतलब ये के शेप फंक्शंस फॉर एलिमेंट 2 हमें चाहिए अब इसके ऊपर भी आते हैं कौन-कौन से शेप फंक्शंस हैं जो एक्चुअली इस बाउंड्री के ऊपर एग्जिस्ट करते हैं ठीक नाउ हैव अ थिंक नोड 3 का जो शेप फंक्शन है n3 वो तो वी नो इज 0 एट बोथ 1 एंड 2 नोड्स that is, it is the boundary of this whole boundary. So, the term of n3 is the whole boundary of zero. Hai. Thik, let me, just a second, let me expand this expression right here so that it is clear that I am considering individual shape functions ko Q. Consider kar rahi Q, Q bar minus integration over edge 1, 2. And what is this? This is the shape function matrix for element 2. So, this is n1, n2 and n3 hai of element 2. Okay, so of element 2, I will write 2 lit de thi, usko clear ho integrated over that domain d gamma ke upar, edge 1, 2. Ke upar. Ab, now, I am considering basically a shape function. Ko. So, I first jump to n3 because that's the one most easily uh, uh, we can observe that n3 jo hai is puri boundary ke upar 0 hoga kyunki wo sirf node 3 ke upar 1 hai to n3 wali term to disappear ho jati hai this will be equal to 0 
तो ये तो गायब हो गई इसको हमें कंसिडर करने की ज़रूरत नहीं अब रही बात सिर्फ एन वन और एन टू की ना एन वन और एन टू का लाइन इंटेग्रल हमने निकालना है बाउंड्री इंटेग्रल है ओवर दिस एज वन टू सो देन इट्स अ गुड आइडिया कि हम एक नया कोऑर्डिनेट डिफाइन कर लें जस्ट अबाउट दिस लाइन दैट इज टी आई एम गोइंग टू डिफाइन दैट गोज फ्राम नोड वन टू नोड टू बेसिकली हमने उसको इंटीग्रेशन को एक वन डिमेंशनल इंटीग्रेशन में कन्वर्ट कर रहे हैं तो नाउ आई नीड टू कंसिडर कि ये एन वन और एन टू इस बाउंड्री पे हैं क्या अब वो क्या है वो हमें पहले ही पता है सो फॉर एग्जांपल नोड वन का जो शेप फंक्शन है एन वन वो इस बाउंड्री के ऊपर नोड टू पे तो ज़ीरो था और नोड वन के ऊपर वन पे होता है तो वो ज़ीरो से वन तक जा रहा है फ्राम नोड टू टू नोड वन उसकी ये शेप लगेगी मेरा ये ये नोड टू है मेरा और ये नोड वन की पोजीशन है कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंगली एन टू जो है शेप फंक्शन ऑफ नोड टू दैट गोज फ्रॉम ज़ीरो टू वन राइट हियर ये वन हो गया फॉर व्हेन इट्स एट नोड टू ओके सो अब इन लोगों के लाइन इंटेग्रल्स क्या हो गए जैसे हमने डिस्कस किया था सो इफ़ आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड एन वन इंटीग्रेटेड अबाउट टी दैट इज़ जस्ट द एरिया ऑफ अंडर द एन वन प्रोफाइल दैट इज़ द एरिया राइट हियर वेर एज इस वाले के लिए एन टू के लिए वो एरिया राइट हियर है दोनों के दोनों क्या हैं क्योंकि ये इट्स गोइंग टू वन ये इसकी लेंथ जो थी वो वन है एक्स कोर्डिनेट्स में टू से फोर जो सॉरी ग्लोबल ग्लोबल टू से फोर या एलिमेंट वाइज वन से टू जो जा रही है डायमेंशन ये वाली डायमेंशन क्या है दैट्स जस्ट वन सो द एरिया ऑफ दिस रेडेंट पार्ट इज जस्ट हाफ ऑफ बेस इज वन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय हाइट और हाइट भी वन तक है क्योंकि वो शेप फंक्शन सिर्फ वन तक ही जाते हैं सो इट्स जस्ट इक्वल टू हाफ इसको भी इसी तरह एनालाइज करें दैट इज़ आल्सो एरिया अंडर द एरिया अंडर एन टू जो है दैट इज अगेन हाफ ऑफ वन टाइम्स वन वही चीज़ आ जाती है हमारे पास ओके सो बेसिकली देन वी कैन फाइंड दिस बाउंड्री इंटेग्रल हमें ये इंटेग्रल्स हमने निकाल ली हैं हाफ ये ये जो इंटीग्रेशन है उससे हमारे पास सिर्फ हाफ और हाफ और ज़ीरो वैल्यू आ रही है सो दिस टर्न इन वो जो माइनस क्यू बार मल्टीप्लाइड बाय हाफ हियर एन टू के लिए भी हाफ था फाइनली एन थ्री के लिए वो ज़ीरो ओके सो इन केस दिस इज़ नॉट क्लियर ये इसको प्लीज हैव प्लीज गो थ्रू द एग्जैक्ट कैलकुलेटेड मेथड फॉर दिस एज वेल कि अगर हम एक लोकल वेरिएबल टी को डिफाइन करें फिर हम इनको इक्वेजन्स को डिफाइन कर सकते हैं फॉर एन वन एन एन टू या ये तरीका कर सकते हैं और फिर इंटीग्रेशन करें या फिर द मेथड दैट आई जस्ट डिस्कस विद यू कि अगर हम इफ आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड द इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ एन वन ओवर दिस लाइन देन बेसिकली आई एम फाइंडिंग द एरिया अंडर एन वन तो इसलिए इट्स द एरिया ऑफ दिस ट्राई एंगल एंड सिमिलरली फॉर एन टू एज वेल विच इज़ वाई आई गेट हाफ एंड हाफ मल्टीप्लाइड बाई क्यू बार क्यू बार जो है ट्वेंटी है सो आई गेट माइनस टेन एंड माइनस टेन राइट हेयर ओके सो दिस इज जस्ट द बाउंड्री फ्लक्स वैक्टर फॉर एलिमेंट टू वी वॉलरेडी डिस्कस के एलिमेंट वन की किसी भी बाउंड्री के ऊपर कोई फ्लक्स नहीं है ये इधर क्यू ज़ीरो है यहाँ पे तो टेम्परेचर बाउंड्री है अप्लाई हो रही सो दिस इज़ वाई दिस डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट एसेंशली सो वी गेट बेसिकली असम्बल करके ओनली दैट दिस एफ टू एग्जिस एंड मस्ट बी असम्बल इन टू द ग्लोबल फ्लक्स वैक्टर ओके सो हमारे पास ग्लोबल सॉरी बाउंड्री फ्लक्स वैक्टर भी आ गया फाइनली कम्बाइनिंग ऑल ऑफ दीज टू द फ्लक्स बाउंड्री वैक्टर एंड द फ्लक्स सोर्स वैक्टर टुगेदर वी एड दम टुगेदर टू गेट आर टोटल ग्लोबल फ्लक्स वैक्टर एफ लाइक सो 
and then we can write down our entire system of equations pura ka pura global equation ko construct kar sakte hain now now we can plug in our um we can plug in our uh, uh boundary conditions so in this case we know that this boundary right here has a prescribed temperature of 0 jiska matlab ye hai ki node 1 aur 3 ke upar नोड वन और थ्री के ऊपर टेम्परेचर ज़ीरो है ठीक है सो बेसिकली इसका मतलब ये कि ये वाली रोज और कॉलम्स कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग टू वन एंड थ्री नोड्स दे विल दे कैन बी एलिमिनेटेड इफ दे आर एलिमिनेटेड वी गेट आर रिड्यूस्ड मेट्रिक्स इक्वेजन एंड दिस वन वी कैन सॉल्व स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्डली सच दैट वी कैन फाइंड दैन के हमारा टी टू एंड टी फोर क्या है ओके okay. so basically we've got our entire solution um uh, there there are a few other things that we could do after this so for example i i forgot to include in the slides right here okay if i have a prescribed um yes no uh, actually no this is this is all complete sorry so t2 and t4 uh, we can find um in our uh, once we've got our uh, solution for all of the nodes now we can um, uh, use this to find some derived variables that is we can post process our results to let's say find a flux wherever we want kyunki flux bhi hame pata hai fourier's law se related hai temperature gradient se so hum isko phir wo find kar sakte hain uh, about Uh, either about any boundary or about at any point in the element or any point ko agar hame nikalna hai to hum apni interpolation ko use karte hain right wo temperature ki interpolation karke hum nodal values let's say node 1 2 3 se andar kisi point pe pahunch sakte hain to hame usse flux mil jayega uh, sorry hame temperature mil jayega once we've got our temperature we can also find our fluxes kyunki flux is related to our flux q is related to the temperature gradient by fourier's law as i said so we can also use our approximate temperature profile to find the flux now as i've discussed in the previous lecture as well ke ek ek issue hai ye linear triangular elements ke sath wo ye hai ke hamari fluxes jo hain ek to ye ke wo discontinuous hain over the element boundaries so over this element boundary we will get some uh, Uh, different values for the flux in element one and the flux in element two. So this is this is slightly physically not uh, physically unmeaningful, physically impossible basically because we are saying that one element में से इतना uh, इतनी heat निकल रही है और दूसरे में उससे ज़्यादा या कम जा रही है. So that is physically impossible. But this is what the, uh, the uh, drawback of the linear triangular element is. सेकेंड इशू इज़ के द फ्लक्सेज जो हम कैलकुलेट करेंगे हमारी अप्लाइड बाउंड्री कंडीशन के ऊपर सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स के इधर हमारे पास क्यू बार इज इक्वल्स टू ट्वेंटी वॉज आर अप्लाइड बाउंड्री कंडीशन ना इफ वी यूज आर अप्रॉक्सीमेट टेम्परेचर प्रोफाइल टू एक्चुअली फाइंड द फ्लक्स ओवर दिस बाउंड्री इट विल टर्न आउट टू गिव अस अ डिफरेंट वैल्यू फ्राम आर अप्लाइड बाउंड्री कंडीशन अगेन दिस इज बिकॉज आर सोल्यूशन इज अप्रॉक्सीमेट एंड देर आर Uh, it's it's not necessarily the converged analytical solution to iski wajah se wo applied boundary condition se bhi different results deta rehta hai um the solution to this both these problems the unphysical discontinuous boundary fluxes sorry un unphysical um fluxes across element boundaries and the calculated fluxes to be different from the applied fluxes इन दोनों चीज़ों का सोल्यूशन ये है कि हम स्मॉलर एंड स्मॉलर एंड स्मॉलर एलिमेंट्स यूज़ करें सच दैट आर रिजल्ट स्टार्ट्स टू कन्वर्ज टू दिटिकल सोल्यूशन एंड ताकि वो डिसकन्टीन्यूटी जो है फ्लक्सेज के अंदर वो छोटे छोटी छोटी होती जाएगी जैसे जैसे हम फाइनर मैश यूज़ करेंगे दैट्स वन वे टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम एंड अदर इज़ टू यूज़ हायर ऑर्डर एलिमेंट्स और सम अदर टाइप्स ऑफ एलिमेंट्स बेसिकली Okay so basically that's it for this for this part of the course so um i have uh, suggestions that please go through these two uh, so one is example 8.1 and uh, problem 8.2 from fish and blitzko
Okay, so we can discuss uh, the uh, worked example right here and these two problems in our lecture on Thursday. Okay, take care. Allah